And a big hello to all you nerds out there, welcome back. It turns out Mario is getting sick of being one shot by the enemies. So with that being said, today we're going to be taking a look at power-ups. And how we can smoothly shift from one animation to the other based on what power-up we have. And we'll be doing this by creating a state for Mario to be in. And depending on that state, we will call different animations. This is what's known as a state machine or finite state machine. So of course, I'll be starting out with a brief explanation. Finite state machines, or FSMs for short, are nothing more than a fancy mathematical model which describes the behavior of systems that can only be in one state from a finite number of states at any given time. But wait, you might say. Fancy? Mathematical? Model? I hate math. I'm here for game development. Boy, do I have some sour news for you, Sally. Math does exist in game development. But we can worry about that later. Finite state machines weren't created for game development. They were merely adopted and most commonly just used as a way to switch objects, usually our players or the enemies, between different actions or animations. So there'll be no math in this episode. In our case, today we're going to simply be using it as a way to track which animation Mario should currently be in. So if we're going to be working with Mario changing animations, the first thing we need to do is add all the animations we'll need. So we're going to go through here and create all of our big size animations. And we'll just want to match an animation for each one we have for the normal size or the small. So we'll need one for idle, run, jump, and fall. And in my last video to show off grow, I did a little bit extra detail and I'm just going to tone that back down. And this simply flashes between the small idle and the big idle. And as far as holding our state, we're going to create a new variable on our Mario object. And this will be a string variable. And we want this to start out as an empty string, which I was not able to figure out how to do straight up through the variables. I tried double quotes, double single quotes, and just leaving it blank. And they all came in with a different value other than empty string. So at the start of the scene, I just set it to empty, which is a workaround that is working fine. But if anyone knows how to do this with a default value, just throw it in the comments below because I'm super interested in how it works. And when setting it to empty string in your events, it's going to be double quotes. So you may be wondering why we're just now talking about finite state machines when we've already written so much code for our game. Simple. With the introduction of power-ups, this is a great time to actually break our Mario into different states. Since all the different types of power-ups share similar animations, we need a way to tell our game which animation it should choose. How should we know which idle we need to be in, or which run, or which jump? So, here's our code for Mario's movements, and each different movement has its own different animation. Then in the last video, I added two new animations, one for growing and one for idling while big. And this caused us to have to create a new condition, which verifies we're not doing any of these animations. Otherwise, one animation would override the other. And we would need to do the same thing for jump and fall and run, and for firepower and for leaf power and every other change. And then we would have to create a whole new list of actions to set the animations for Big Mario, Fire Mario, and so on and so forth, which becomes a lot of code and very hard to work with if you need to make changes. So instead, we want to break it down to, is Mario falling? Choose one of these states. So anytime Mario's falling, we're going to choose from normal Mario fall animation, big fall animation, and so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and use that cur state variable that we attach to Mario and keep track of what state we are currently in. Then anytime we call an animation, we're going to base it off of whatever value is in that variable. And when naming animations from now on, we're going to make sure we use the same exact animation name that we started with for small Mario, but with the prefix of whatever state that Mario is. This way, when we want to call big jump, our Mario will be in state big and our animation will be big jump. So we just call jump and then we force in the word big from our state and this will automatically find big jump. So how do we go about adding this to our code? Where we'd normally call our animation, instead of just calling the constant animation state like we were doing, we're going to add the mario.variable string cur state to the name of our old animations. And now as long as we keep Mario up to date with the current state, which will be nothing or an empty string for normal Mario, capital big 
for Big Mario and Capital Fire for Fire Mario. More to come later. They'll automatically update to the correct state anytime we do an animation. And while we're in this code, real quick, if you notice issues with Mario skipping over his fall animation after jumping, that's because we have a little bug in here with our order of operations. The Mario is falling has to come after the Mario is jumping. This way the second event can override the first event after Mario is finished jumping. Now we're ready to go ahead and add our fire effect. And in Mario, the question marks work based off of the current state Mario is already in. So if you grab the first block, or you grab the second block, or you even grab both blocks, you're going to get a mushroom every time if you're in small state. Only after you're already big will a question block give you the second tier power up. And then, depending on what question block you hit, it can either give you the feather or firepower. Since currently we're just working on adding firepower, we'll go ahead and program this first. So of course we'll have to add a new animation to our power up, and we'll call this one fire, and we'll make it look like the flower. The code itself breaks into three simple conditions. First, we need to make sure we're actually colliding with the question mark block. And we figured that out last time, so we're just going to continue from there. And then the next two, we are checking whether or not Mario is currently in the small state, which we can do with checking his variable cur state and making sure it's blank. And if that's the case, we're going to set the power up to be power up. And then beneath that, we will check if Mario is in big state and also check if the question block is fire. And if that's the case, then we'll set the power up to fire. And of course, we'll have to add the fire animations, which currently I have run idle and grow, which the grow just flashes between big idle and fire idle. All right, now that Mario has power ups, we can finally give him his wish. Anywhere in our code where we have delete Mario, instead of just deleting him, we'll check to see whether he is out of his small state. So on our Mario is not falling event, we will add two sub events, one for Mario's variable cur state is equal to empty, and one where it is not. And if it's not, we're going to want to set up an object timer for Mario. And I'll go ahead and name that iframe. And then we're going to want to change the variable cur state back to empty string, because we're going to make them small again. Then somewhere in the code we need to add an anywhere the iframe timer is more than 0.35 seconds. Set Mario's boolean back to false. And this will just give him a brief time where he doesn't get hit multiple times on a single collision. The object Mario will need a boolean called iframe as well. And this will just toggle between being set and not set. And if it's set, we are going to ignore collisions by just verifying that Mario's variable iframe is set to false on a collision. And keep in mind, we'll have to do this for all states of collision checks since we haven't refactored our code yet and we have a lot of different collision events. The last thing I want to tackle is allowing Fire Mario to actually throw fireballs. We won't worry about the animations yet, so we're going to need to create the object that is the fireball. If Mario's cur state is fire and the player presses the Z key, we'll go ahead and create the fireball. We're going to have it be created at a set point on our Mario. And once it's created, it's going to need to rotate as it bounces forward. To make this happen, we'll have the four directions of the fireball playing on loop. And then we'll add the platformer object to our fireball. We'll bring the gravity down pretty low. We'll try out 320. And then we'll constantly have it moving in the direction it's facing. So we'll need a variable on our fireball to decide if it's going left or right based off of the direction Mario's looking. We'll also want to turn default control off. And we also want to have it constantly jumping. That way it has the effect of bouncing off the ground. Nailed it. All right, this might look bad, but it's really just a few quick fixes. First off, to stop the infinite casts. There's two ways to do this. We can set a blocker that stops you once you press Z until it's released. Or we can take the lazy way out and just set it to Z on released to fire. Next, the fireball's bouncing super high in the air. That's just because there is super low gravity compared to them. So we can go ahead and drop their jump speed to something lower, like 160. And finally, they look a little weird if you throw them while you're running. And that's just their acceleration speed since they start out at zero and have to catch up to you before they start moving slightly faster than you. And I just went and bumped those both up to 9999 acceleration and deceleration. All right, we got our fireballs looking pretty toasty. So we need a way to make fireballs disappear when they collide with things they should disappear from. 
So we'll go ahead and make a new group and we'll go through all our objects and we'll add anything that should stop our fireballs into that object group. So we can skip things like our background events, coins, the floor, even though that is a solid, we want it to bounce off the top of the floor and keep going. And we'll add all of our enemies as well as the face block and the question mark block. And then in our code, we need to make this group actually do something. So we'll create a new condition and this will be our fireball on collision with our new group we created. And if that's the case, we'll go ahead and delete the fireball. And this will leave room for us to later add things like a collision animation for the fireball, as well as the ability to kill enemies that it hit. And we can do a little testing inside of our preview. And hitting the side of the face blocks is great. If I can hit the enemy, we can see that it does also stop on the enemy. But we do end up with an issue of hitting the top of our face blocks in question mark block. And that should work like the floor where it bounces off them. So we'll need to build in an extra catch in order to allow this to happen. We'll start off with duplicating our face block hitbox, rename that to FB bounce check, and we'll make a slight edit to it. We're just going to resize it to 18 by two. And this is to make sure it goes past the edges, but doesn't cover up as much as the sides. And this is going to sit on top of our question blocks as well as face blocks. Next, we can go ahead and give this the platform object. And we'll need a way to set this check on top of all of our block objects. So we will have to add a new point on our animations called FB bounce. And we're going to set this slightly to the left and slightly above. And on our face block, we only need to do the one animation. And on our question block, we're going to again set it slightly to the left and then slightly above where the image is. So we're looking at negative one and 15. And we'll need this done on all the animations that could potentially be on the start of our project since that's when we set these hitboxes. So the knockup one does not matter. Then in our code, we're going to do the same thing we did for the hitbox checks. And then for both our face block and question mark blocks, we will create one for each block at our new position we made. All right, we have the locations correct, but they are stopping us from jumping through the bottom. So we're going to go into the FB bounce check behavior for platform, and we're going to edit it from platform to jump through. And this will alleviate the platform stopping us from jumping through the bottom, as well as us catching the lip of our new FB bounce checks. But we do still end up landing on top of it while our face block is in flip mode. So here we need to do something a little bit different. So while our face block is playing flip, we want to grab the FB bounce check that is colliding with that face block and we want to delete it. And since we already have code for creating the FB bounce check in the correct spot for our face block checks, we can copy that, then go down to our code where our flip animation stops, and we'll just paste that create object in. So now when we hit a face block, it'll start flipping and it'll get rid of the FB bounce check until it's done flipping and then we'll create a new one. And that's where we're going to have to call it today. Next time we will add in the ability to have our fireballs interact with the enemies. And we'll get some sound going to liven things up. And then hopefully we'll have enough time and we can add the death animation for Mario. As always, throw any comments, requests, concerns down below. I do my best to respond to everybody. And I add your request where possible. Otherwise, until next time, peace.